Hello everyone and welcome back to Put It To TSCT and... Greetings one and all, it's your old pal Tim Sterling here presenting a very special episode of Put It To TSCT because today you're gonna need your number two boggling boy, number two because of, well, the number one boggling boy and the fact that, well no, no, not the bogglings themselves but the, the presenter, anyway, you draw your own conclusions. Anyway, so today we are going to be having a look at mini boglins. Uh, the small little varieties, much tinier compared to their larger hand puppet sized cousins. Mostly because that's just what I prefer. I've never been a fan of the larger versions, but uh, the mini ones always seem to resonate with me. Anyway, um, so without further ado, let's get on with the show. Hello everyone and welcome back to Put It To TSCT and today, as you probably haven't already guessed, we are looking at loads of mini boglins! Because, you know, screw it, why not? These little darlings are wonderful, colourful, bright and wonderful. I said wonderful far too often because I've run out of words, but there you go, it's what it is. Um, yeah, basically because essentially what i want to point out is the fact that these blind bag and blind box crazies are nothing new it's all you know fashions are circular 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 whatever you want to pronounce it as and essentially you know mini boglins were the blind boxes blind bags of our day in fact there you go one box there so produced by ideal um these ranged in price um i think a 20 pack i saw in Day. <laughs> a 20 pack cost about six quid in 1993 so a five pack what that would have been worth two three quid at the time and there was also a 10 pack and i think there was a slightly smaller three pack and essentially you got advertised on the front that you was getting a specific boggling inside the box all caged within and um yeah the other four were completely at random did i mention they were produced by ideal i think they're also mattel in the states uh, and these were all spawned from the much larger hand puppet boglins. I mean, I don't have one to hand, unfortunately. I've got one similar. But uh, yeah, I was never a huge fan of the bigger hand puppet boglins. Just, they didn't really appeal to me. Um, the thing was, with the mini boglins, they come with a bit of a story, which appealed to me more than just the standard boglins you know monsters trapped inside a cage unleash them and freak people out it the story captured me more than the actual product than product itself to be perfectly honest um so to go over the story uh, i'm gonna have to thank you break out something else they produced to go with these little beasties um the mini boglin swamp carry case which, to be perfectly frank, I think cost at least 20 quid, which was far too much for what it was. But we, we, we'll get to this, we'll get to this. So, yeah. Mini Boglin Swamp Carry Case came free with a chief. Storage case, it's got a tree, a tree and a bridge, whatever. But on the back, we've got the expanded lore, as it were. So, basically, uh, once a very long time ago, the Mini Boglins lived happily in their swamp. The King Boglin noticed that the swamp was drying up and wisely sent pathfinders to find new places to live. Some were successful, others were captured, and yet more were lost and never heard of again. The places each tribe found were unusual, but led by their chiefs, they settled into their new homes. All but the King, who disappeared and has not been seen for a very long time. So. That sort of appealed to me. The king sends out all of his little minions, boglins, each with their own chiefs and pathfinders and what have you. And they all found new places to live. Um, so in this instance, this group, the jokers, live under the stairs. The tough guys are living in the garden. The greedies uh, live under the fridge. You got the clumsies, uh, got stuck in a chimney apparently. You got the rude dudes who are da -da -da, stuck under the toilet. And then you've got the, the freaks who uh, live down a drain. So you can sort of imagine how they sort of all traipsed across, you know, the lands and what have you, from the swamps to your home. And, you know, the tough guys have just stuck it out in the garden, they're stuck in the drain, they've up to the toilet. You know, it, it, it appealed to me. So according to this, right, there were 36 mini boglins in the initial release. 
They did release several tribes after, I think three or four more tribes. I'm looking at what I've got and I can see at least one, two, three, and one I don't have. So yeah, I reckon four more tribes on top of it. Uh, Coming six different colours, most of which are here. Lovely rainbow colours. We love it, we love it, we love it. Um, and uh, yeah, each of the tribes had a chief, which had three horns. Let's see if I can grab one straight off the bat. Uh, no, I can't see any off the bat. Oh, yes, I can. There we go. So we've got one of the uh, the greedies. I'm not going to try and pronounce all their freaking names because, you know, they're all ridiculous. Can we focus on that? We're going to focus. No, yes, 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 yes. Hello? Right, I think that's more or less focused. So, yeah, he's the uh, chief of the greedy because he's got the three horns. Quite nice. So, uh, yeah, we'll put him back for a second. We'll get him back in a minute. Um, there was also Pathfinders, which apparently are in all black. I've never seen a black boglin. I've seen these grey things, which I presume are meant to be, like, the black ones, which are meant to be rare Pathfinders, but blowed if I know um, and lastly they've got these silver ones they've been given the title sir which are very rare so yeah it's just a silver boglin it's slightly lighter shinier grey than what the other one was but yeah that made them rare and made them more collectible and made me want to spend lots of money on this rubberized pile of toot <laughs> basically so um, yeah we'll come we'll come back to that in fact, no, no, I'm going to put it that way, because that way I can cheat and look at which ones, which tribes, which as I pull them up. So, yeah, you, you know, you've, you've got your tribes and they all come in different styles and things. So this is the tough guys, or what I have of the tough guys. Um, they're all, you know, quite cute in their own disgusting way. Right. Okay, no, I'll tell you what, we're going to zoom, zoom. Well, if you take us home, we'll kiss your aunt Martha. <laughs> Right, that's a bit better than me trying to pick them up and put it towards the camera. Right, so yeah, you've got, they're all pre-molded, rubberized, you know, there's slight give to them in the tail. Um, strange things with tails and big faces and their own little characters. So this one's, you know, bending a barbell. This guy's meant to look a bit like Frank Bruno, I think. This guy's got a, a, a sword, I think, and a mohawk and some kind of bandana around his head. And this guy's got a big club with spikes in, you know, all rude, Gruesome, not well, not so much gruesome, just rude and ugly looking things really, aren't they? It's what they were, what they are. Um, so yeah, that's, you know, the tough guys. Let's have a look and see what we've got next. I um, grabbed the freaks who live down the drain. So yeah, these were all a bit more uglier than the other ones, even though the other ones were all pretty ugly as it was. There we go, get all in frame. you got this guy who's taking his eyeball out and his teeth out. And you've got this Frankenstein looking dude. He looks like he's had a stroke. Uh, this guy that's, looks like he's jumping out trying to scare you. Uh, this weird melted mohawk punk guy. And this thing with a huge nose. Yeah, it's, it's, it's all pretty standard. It's all There's nothing much to them, as you can see. They're all pretty. These were the, um, the forerunners of, you know, the trash pack and things like that. You know, all that sort of stuff, all that good thing. All that good thing, all those good things, if they're good at all. Let's have a look at the Jokers. Get the Jokers in there. Now, a few of these were retired between releases. Uh, I don't believe this ghost guy with the chain got through to the second wave. I think he was pulled because they added more Boglins after this. These were the standards um, sets from the original, from 91. But um, as it goes, when they up the ante and they released more they took some of these out so I'm fairly certain this guy with the gun shooting himself in the head was removed as was the guy with the bomb the bomba uh, I can't remember what they replaced them with but you know th there are lots of websites out there that you know lots of details and bogglings but it's all bitty and nothing's all quite in the same place it's hard for me to sort of recapture everything and work out when exactly everything changed. But yeah, I know for a fact these two were definitely removed in future releases and replaced with other characters. Uh, I think the guy with the TNT stayed and the guy with the slingshot, he also stayed. I think he's the, is he the, um... he's got three horns, so I presume he's the chief. So yeah, you know, 
they've all got their own characters, they've all got their own distinct, unique things and what have you. So let's have a look. Uh, let's have a look at the... Let's go for the rude dudes. The rude dudes. The food thing. I don't know the food thing one. I'm looking at the other ones, thinking of that. Um, and this, the beauty of this one is... Hang on, let's get everyone in front. Can we get everyone in front? We push them back just a touch. <laughs> Just about squeeze everyone in frame there, almost. Yes. Yeah, it looks about right. Um, yeah, you know, these... Uh, da, 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 da. <sighs> yeah, the rude dudes. The rude dudes under the toilet. Right, so. I've got a guy with a bucket. It should have been on a door. It's falling on his own head. I've got a guy sticking his tongue out. It's the chief. Got a nice seal, one of them. I've got this guy who's been sick. I don't know how that's... I suppose it is quite rude to be sick, but I don't know if you can help the facts. This guy stick his tongue out, doing the ear things with his fingers, whatever. Now, these two, I've got conflicting reports. These are meant to be the same thing. I don't know which one. I presume this is the initial one. Because looking at it, I think he's trying to stick a middle finger up at you. Can we get a bit of a... I think that's two hands. And between his fingers, he's got his middle finger up. So I think that was the original design, I think. I think they got pulled and had to be replaced with um, this one, which is a bit more just finger in the nose. I believe, again, details are few and far between, and um, it's not, not as simple as you'd think to try and work out which of these were, when and why, and what year, because unlike all other toys that I've owned, they don't have any stamps on the bottom to tell you what year they were made. So that makes dating and timing all these ridiculously hard. Quick look at the... Da -da -da -da. Oh, pulling the carpet up with it. Uh, yeah, we've got the greedies. We get them in frame. So yeah, you got the greedies. You've got the guy pouring two drinks into his mouth at the same time. This guy that's actually a burger. This one with a can of drinks spilling it all down himself. Uh, the chief ready to eat. Uh, this guy who's wearing spaghetti and eating it. And this guy who's so hungry, easy, ended up eating his own tail. Don't know why my voice is going funny, but it is. Uh, and lastly, of the original Triumph, we've got the Clumsies. Now, let's see. So, yeah, again, this guy who got the symbols trapped around his head never got through to the second wave. The guy with the uh, knife in the tongue, I think he got through to the second wave, can't remember. The melting guy definitely didn't get through. Again, I don't quite know why, but he didn't. Neither did the, uh, I think his name was Tell, with the arrow through his head. Didn't get that either. And the guy with the ice cream, I think he did make it through to the next one. So, you know, lots of lovely little colours and, you know, they're bright and colourful and what have you. And all quite unique in their own ways. So you can see why they're collectible and why children of the 90s would be interested in this sort of thing. Um, of the, after, after this I sort of fell out of love with the Boglins, especially when we released the new tribes. So we had ones from like the Samurais, which I felt was a bit odd. You had the Prehistorics and the Medievals that I weren't particularly interested in. The Army Guys, which were just Army Guys. I felt they were running out of steam and losing the original boggling ethos of just monsters escaping from a swamp that's drying up. So I, I, they didn't really appeal to me after that, so I, I stopped collecting them. I did occasionally get different ones, like there was this one that came in a toilet covered in slime. Which was, I thought that works, that, that was quite neat, but there was only four of them released and the slime, you know, it just, it gets hard and it's still attached to it now and it's gross and sticky and horrible. Um, but the appeal was such that, uh, Kellogg's with their cereal, when they once upon a time gave toys away in food boxes and containers, they produced these mini, mini boglins. Um, yeah, for scale, have I got one that's similar? I do have one that's similar. Where's he gone? I've lost him. So, just quickly, we've got the melting guy with the candle, and you've got this melting guy with the ice cream. So you can see there's a slight size difference. But hey-ho, there you go. Um, no, oh, no, I want the mini one, mini, mini ones. So yeah, they're the mini, 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 mini ones. And, you know, they're all unique, but based on similar designs. And yeah, they, they were quite neat for their time. Did something, you know, gave another layer of collectibles. So I had to buy the cereal to get the toys, which these days you're not allowed to do because it's all for the sugars and whatnot. But never mind. 
Such is life. Legs are fingerlingly frightful. Some even glow in the dark. So yeah, these were the 90s blind box things for, that I collected. They're none too different to all the uh, current rubberized, colorized tat with special editions and colors to chase. I wasn't, I never really liked different colors. I like the bright colors. I like the bright, especially these Kellogg's ones. They're nice, they're very nice indeed. Um, but yeah, we'll have a quick look at this um, carry case, which to be perfectly honest, was rubbish at what it was meant to do. Um, initially, I really wanted it because it said with free chief. I think in my small mind, I got confused and thought it came with the king. I don't know, whatever. Um, anyway, let's open the damn thing up. And basically, I'm missing the bridge, but you can see the tree was a flimsy bit of plastic with a bit of green flocking on it, which looks like moss, which weren't so bad, and could be placed, you know, up here, and then, or over here, and you could put it over here. Could put it over here, but I've, I've, I've since ruined it. I've basically destroyed the damn thing. Um, and as you can see, it's just a little swamp layout place set with a bit of a river in the middle and some tree stumps that are fit, meant to be tree stumps and what could possibly be a drain. Behave. Could be a drain while I'm looking at it and some steps and could be an old building. I, I don't know. There's nothing really distinct about it. It's just horribly painted, quick brush job, pre-molded, flimsy old plastic. And it's just not very good. And it, as a carry case, it's not great either because these boglins are quite large. And so you can only get a few in there and they don't really close properly unless you precisely put everything in the right place to coincide with the other side. I mean, and the seal was a bit pants as well. It's not so bad, but it's not ideal. It's not brilliant. You know, up to 12 characters and I've got more than 12. I don't know. I just, yeah. So that was, that was a massive disappointment to say the least. A massive waste of money. Um, although to be perfectly frank, most of these were, you know, it's all, it's all a massive waste of money. These small, colorful rubber monsters that really, quite frankly, I bothered my parents far too much for and got them to spend far too much money on <sighs> the more things change the more they stay the same isn't it that's the saying so um i don't know i i, I think i've made my point now mini boglins uh, blind boxes were a thing back in the 90s too and as much as i can't stand some of the guff that's put out these days <laughs> God, I've all wasted so much money on this junk. <sighs> yeah, you see, I didn't even get a top hat. I just got whatever was lying around. I mean, frankly, I'd run out of budget by the time I'd done the graphics. So what was she going to do? Just go for the cheapest option, I suppose. Um, I do look a bit more like Linkara than I do Jim Sterling. But uh, point is, this was a loving send up of our good old pal Jim Sterling, the number one boggling boy. Uh, whom I shall link to in the description, wherever that may be this century. And I'll put it on the screen, probably down here, but it could be up there, 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 there. Saturday Night Fever style. Um, <clears throat> anyway, yes, so do feel free to go check him out. But before you do, be warned! He's a very rude boy and talking about very rude things with very rude words. So, yeah, if you have a nervous disposition or one of the little ones that may be watching this, because it's toys I've reviewed so why wouldn't there be children watching uh, do be warned yeah it's it's not for all ages put it that way um, so yeah without further ado hope you've enjoyed the episode um, if this goes well you might see more of good old Tim Sterling but it's very unlikely uh, all that I've got left to say is um, well thank God for me or him you know whichever floats your boat <laughs>